We're same, similar questions. I mean, it's a great opportunity to test yourself against a, a team that at this stage is playing finals as well, um, at, but on your home deck. Yeah, it is. It's a great opportunity. I think um, last week was a great opportunity. This week again, and then our next two as well. So we've got a really good run home um, against some finalists. Um, so it'll be, yeah, it's a big month of footy for our club and a uh, big game tomorrow. And yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. Fake said the other day that the outside world might have been talking about that it was a missed opportunity for the Lions, but you guys took a lot of positives out of that game, the performance against the big experienced team down in the MCG. What's the I guess the vibe being at the club this week of, of that confidence that you that takes as you got out of it. Yeah, it's been a good vibe. I think um, previously we haven't performed very well, um, especially at that ground. Um, Richmond are a really hard team to beat at the G. I think I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they've lost one game there this year, and that was to Geelong by three points. Um, so for us to go down by a goal, basically one point, they kick one at the end. But um, I think we gave it a red hot crack. Uh, some of our footy in the first half was the best footy we've played all year so I think we're building and we can take a lot of confidence away from that um, and yeah we move on now on to, on to this week. And the midfield challenge against another team with you know, Walsh and, and Grips, you know, got stars of the competition that's also for your midfield in particular something to really um, hang your hat on if you can go head to head with them and then come out on top. Yeah I feel like over the last month our midfield's built back a bit of form. We were probably um, down in a few key areas um, through the midfield um, prior to that. I think maybe the GWS game we started to get things going a bit better in the midfield and um, hopefully we can carry that form um, through that part of the ground but there's a lot of areas that um, make up the game, not just the midfield but we know they've got um, stars on every line so uh, it's, there's some important jobs for our defenders. Um, they've got some great key defenders and running backs and then obviously some stars in the midfield as well so I think it'll be a good battle on, on all three lines. You talked about that last month, how much has Matho made a difference? Just like a bigger body but more also his aggression as a, as a player, like he really relishes those I don't know, picking people up and throwing them to the ground, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, you can't do too much of that these days. But, uh, no, nah, he's a bigger body in there. He brings a lot of energy to our group. Even um, when he wasn't playing, I think he probably set the record for the amount of times he was emergency. Um, he's been banging the door down all year and really taking his opportunity. But even when he wasn't playing, he just brings such great energy and vibe to our group. Um, he's a great club man. And... For him to get an opportunity and take it like he has is a credit to him and um, yeah, he's doing some really good things for our, our midfielders. There's been a bit of spotlight on JL's form over maybe the last sort of seven, eight weeks. Um, partly because of the high standard he set over the last two years. Has, what's he been doing to try and maybe get back to some of his best form? Because, I mean, his numbers are, are significantly down. Yeah, I haven't really picked up on too much of that talk or what any, anyone's been saying, but internally we value what he brings to us so highly. He's uh, one of the best uh, midfield minds that I've come across in the game. He sets us up really well, um, communicates to our our boys um, so well out there and um, gives us great direction and I think he's still so um, valuable and a key to our clearance stuff. Um, his first possession uh, to clearance stuff is unbelievable, some of the things that he does. Um, he's got great hands, so um, we still rate what he does really highly and uh, I haven't really heard much of what everyone else is saying, but I think he's still playing a key role for us. Hey, look, one thing to me that seems to have been lost from last week is he didn't have the starts. He played such a big role in the fact that he's the back. How much did much you miss him? Can you give us an idea of how big a role he plays? Yeah, well, I think you can probably just look back to last year's best and fairest count. I think he was fourth or something, and we had a pretty good year, so he's crucial to our team, and we missed him last week. He might have been able to play on Bolton a bit better than what some of us other guys did, so it um, would have been handy to have him, but uh, really proud of what the guys dished up last week as well. Um, I think Nakaya Cockatoo came in and, and played some good footy. He's just learning his um, defence craft. Uh, he's sort of been thrust into that role a couple of times over the last few weeks and done it really well. Uh, so, yeah, it starts as obviously an important cog to us. Um, we didn't have Richie either, so a um, couple of key members of our back six that we, we get back this week, which is exciting. And um, obviously Kitty Coleman as well has come on in leaps and bounds. And, geez, he's a serious player. So, 
he's probably been our best player the last month when he's played and um, yeah, love what Kitty brings to our back lines. Um, hopefully we've got all of them firing tomorrow, it's going to be an important battle. The, the narrative over the last couple of weeks of the teams you've played being more desperate, like the Tigers desperate to keep and stay alive in the finals and there's probably more desperation from the Palm about you guys for that finals. When does it point get to the Lions to be desperate? Well, I think we're pretty desperate now. We were desperate last week. I think, I reckon if you watch the first half, our attitude and intensity um, was probably the best it's been all season. And we were desperate to, to play well last week. And I thought that for most of that game we did, we let ourselves down a little bit defensively and um, some turnover stuff. We didn't make the most of some of our opportunities. Uh, but I think we're desperate at the moment. We're desperate for a win. Um, we're desperate for some good form heading into finals and hopefully you see that tomorrow. We'll ask you both together about, I mean, how, how important and how, how proud you are to wear you know, members on your back, but also how important they are to like. Yeah, oh, clearly members are the fabric of basically every sporting organisation and um, rings true for us here at Brizzy. We rely so heavily on our fans and, and their support and um, to have the, the names on our backs uh, this week will be awesome and a great reward for uh, 23, 23 members um, with Mitchy as the, as the sub. I probably shouldn't have said that, but... <laughs> um, so there'll be 23 uh, that get rewarded, which is awesome, uh, but we thank them all. So, um, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, well, like I said, it's, um, I think we played in front of some passionate fans this year and they've been up and about, but um, you know, the support they, they give to the club's been huge and I think especially the last couple of years with COVID, especially back in Melbourne, um, you know, they, they stuck fat and, and helped the club through a pretty tough time. So for them to um, do that, was, I suppose it's a small way to give back. And um, yeah, like, like I said, 22 guys out there with, with members' names on the back. And um, yeah, it should be, should be a great game. Lucky record membership for the Lions. And obviously Carl have got to be following him. And tomorrow's a, a sellout. That's for, for both of you to play in front of a sellout crowd, regardless, regardless of the yeah, it's awesome. Um, I feel like our fans this year have come out in, in numbers and um, tomorrow is no different. So to have a sellout on a Sunday afternoon game is, uh, is great. So uh, I'm sure there'll be some Blues fans there as well, but hopefully a lot more uh, maroon there and can't wait to hear the roar of our crowd. They're always great here at the Gabba and um, yeah, looking forward to it. Pat, you're already getting a hostile reception. Are you expecting more of that tomorrow? Uh, it's always like that when you, you travel into state. It's um, I think that's the beauty of when you, you play away. It's sort of the 22 that run out there against the Oppo crowd. And um, oh, we played here a few years ago. And it's always loud up here. And um, tuned into a few of the Brisbane games this year up at the Gabba, and um, especially the night games. They seems to be pretty loud. So uh, we'll do our best early to try and silence them. But um, I think it's going to be a great game. Um, you, you always love playing in front of in front of as many fans as you can. And um, yeah, it creates a great atmosphere for the game. Uh, before we separate, we did go one, one, one at a time. Earlier in the season, Lockie was watching your games, talking about how inspired he was watching you and, and how that pushed him to, to, to play better and uh, lift his own game. Have you been watching him as well? He did pretty well that week. I think he had about 40 and 3 the two days after he said that. So, no, nah, we, um, we, we actually chat a fair bit, himself and Lock, um, obviously with the ball bag and stuff, but um, try and pick each other's brains a bit on, um, you know, watching how people play and. Um, yeah, I, I watch a lot of his vision, how he sort of manoeuvres around stoppages, how he deals with taggers. So um, I think it's a, a lot of the players in the competition sort of pick apart each other's games to try and, I suppose, add elements to their game and, and try and get better. No advice this week, I assume, though. <laughs> no, head to head tomorrow, so it should be good. Is that, is that, is that rare to both of you? Is that, is that rare? I mean, the fact that you two sort of exchange, I don't know, pick each other's brains, but is there any other players who do that I think it's more calm for like we've um, obviously played at the Dockers for a few years and he was actually good mates with my older brother so we sort of built up a bit of a relationship through there and um, share the same manager so um, throughout the years we've sort of just done a uh, bit of stuff together off field and built a relationship so it's more we just check in with each other see how we're going but every now and then we'll talk a bit of footy stuff but um, yeah it's always good yeah, to pick someone else's brains and see how they sort of approach things. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's nailed it, but yeah, we've got a bit of a relationship, so um, I don't sort of text too many other players around the competition, but um, I think for me, when I was younger, I tried to um, have a few mentors and stuff that I tried to learn a bit off from other teams, but um, yeah.
what he said. <laughs>